friends, welcome back, welcome back. It's author Joe Holtz. We're here today with another fireside chat. Our special guest, you know him, you love him. It's Violent Hippie. Hey guys, how's it going? Thank you and, and special shout out to Joe for, for having me on the podcast. Joe, I do want to say before we get started, what an honor it is to, to have been asked by you to be here. So certainly glad to be here and glad oh, man. to be, be chatting. Well, I do. The honor is all mine, honestly. You know, like the reason I joined D Live was to uh, encourage other people and spread love around the world. And when I found you and your channel and the things that uh, you you talk about, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to talk to this guy. He's all about that love. Well, that's what we do, man. We try to spread the love always, man. And and we've done that since since. Since when I was a little baby streamer, I got shown love, and and so I learned from from some of the best, and really just continuing the legacy. So I I made these uh, custom stickers just for you, buddy. Dude, and I, I absolutely love them, dude. The, <laughs> the, I I, I'm, I know these people at the, in the chat right now have to love them too, because these are some of the most badass stickers I've seen. They they trump any sticker that I've tried to upload in in D Live. So thank you for those. I'm definitely gonna kind of have to lift. We call it leveraging. Uh, where I'm from, we don't call it stealing. <laughs> I'm gonna have to to leverage those yeah, in yeah. my channel. <laughs> no, in the military, we called it commandeering. There you it's go. There you re go. Re I, reappropriation. Fancy <laughs> words, all the same thing. Yeah, reappropriation <laughs> is the best one, I think. So, <laughs> man, so everybody's spamming the love already in the chat, guys. Wow. Hey, guys. Nikki in the house. Filthy. Man. Try hard. Leo. Risky Biscuit in the house. Oh, man. What's up, guys? Dude, we Thank got such an incredible audience for this one. I'm, it's going to be lit, man. It's going to be lit. I'm excited. I'm All right, guys. So just so you know, there is a touch of lag on the video. We don't know why. I actually upgraded to uh, Discord Nitro. If you guys don't know, you can pay five bucks a month and get a little bit better uh, Discord performance. We did that. There's, so please bear with us if there's any technical difficulties. Man, I feel like I wore the wrong shirt, Violent. Like I'm not nearly mm -hmm. shiny enough for this interview. Uh, dude, <laughs> you got you got your vibe, but it's the it's the total chill vibe dude. and. Look and at what's! Got, oh my God! Look at what's happening in chat. <laughs> I see it right now. Leo is going off, man. I love it. Yes. What's up? We got Ben in the house. Wow! Wow! I'm so happy everybody is here. Oh man, my face already hurts, awesome. and I'm smiling so much. We just, you just gotta train those smiling muscles, man. That my mine are mine are thankfully strong from years. Oh, years dude, I've smiling. got crow's feet that like a mofo from smiling. <laughs> Risky Biscuit dropped the cream. I love it, dude, man. I love it. Bearded Leo, Tryhard CC, Nikki, dude, you guys, Creedy, like so much love already. All right, so we're gonna have to get into this thing, or otherwise it's gonna take all day. <laughs> and uh, in case in case you guys didn't know, uh, stay tuned after Violent Hippies uh, interview. We've got Filthy Saint on next. Super stoked. We had Bearded Leo on. We're just we're gonna get as many of the. Uh, the good vibe tribe guys on here as possible try hard cc you're next man you're next you see this you see this i see you i know you mm, i'm coming i'm coming it. all right so we're going to start with the first question because it seems like the right place to start violent hippie now when i first saw your name was in the partner discord chat uh for uh d live partners and when when you were uh chosen to become a verified partner my first thought was Sun Tzu would be proud. So let's talk about your name and how you came up with it, my friend. All right. Well, first off, that was a hilarious comment. And I do remember that. And I was like, that is like uber creative, whoever just said that. And I'm like, I was intrigued by that. So so thank you for the comment, first of all. But but Violent Hippie was something I put a lot of thought into. You know, when I when I decided to be a streamer, you know, it was a big decision for me. It wasn't a casual thing. I wasn't going to just casually do it. Um, it was something that I knew I was going to put a lot of energy into. I kind of decided that that streaming was something that I wanted to do long term before I even started streaming. And uh, before that, I kind of gotten in real estate. So I, I put a lot of thought into it. Um, and Violent Hippie, you know, uh, uh, I just to give you a little background, I'm I 
I'm not a true hippie by any means. Um, I've never lived in a van. I've never, um, you know, been to Woodstock or, or anything crazy like that. But but where the idea of hippie came from was I kind of have always been a, a junkie of, of self-help and, and mm. uh, self-help books. And I've, I've done a lot of work on myself, uh, especially in college and, and growing up. And I kind of came to, to have this, you know, one love, one heart kind of kind of uh, Bob Marley type attitude, mm. I would say. And, you know, I was just like, you know what, hippie sounds like it would embody all of all of kind of my ideals as a streamer, right? The, the hippie vibe is kind of the vibe that I wanted to go for because I wanted to show love and and uh, and put out that that positive vibe. So that's where the hippie came from. And then I've always been a shooter. I've always loved shooting games. So I was like, OK, well. I think that would be perfect. And and actually another another interesting side of it, my very first gamer tag ever uh, when I got an Xbox when I was a little kid was Holy Imp, hmm. which is a, a blatant oxymoron, right? And that's that's always right, so, right. So so I was like, why not go with another blatant oxymoron here? So thus you got the violent hippie. Well, I thought it to, so my first uh, inclination was well, he's this beautiful, loving soul, but he also likes first person shooters. Exactly. Exactly. So that's that's essentially what it is, is is the hippie part represents kind of me as a person. And then the violent part represents what I like to do as a streamer, which is play violent video games, you could say. Yes, yes. Friday night customs, brother. But we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Let's not jump ahead. All right. Question two. How long have you been streaming and what got you streaming? Okay, so so I started streaming about a year ago. I believe it was actually, mm, I want to say it was February, so a little over a year. And back then, you know, I, I had very minimal equipment. Uh, luckily, I had a, a good paying job at the time, so I was able to get some good stuff. But I started out on Mixer and, and Twitch and you know, absolutely zero luck there. Um, I think I think still to this day on Twitch, I maybe have 33 followers. So it was a lot of empty streams uh, with with one or no viewers. And then, uh, oh my gosh, your chat, dude. I love seeing all these people. I know, in the house. GK like, in the house. Wow. God What's up, guys? One last merch. round in here. So oh, much man. love, guys. So much Mr. love. Mr. Waterfield. Wow. Welcome, Filthy guys. Saint. There we go. Look at it. Um, but but anyway, so so then then I found kind of just um, to get getting back into it. Um, um, the question was just just to make sure I understand it was how did I get into streaming? Right. Yeah. Yeah. What got you into streaming? And also, so, how long have you been streaming? OK, so we answered how long. So what got me into streaming was that. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd been doing CrossFit for a really long time. I've, I've always been kind of a big worker out or I know tryhards in here saints in here he's a big a big into fitness um but I'm into was, fitness too fitness cheeseburger in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> I'm into that too trust me <laughs> and that's probably the primary reason I'm into fitness so I could do all that that shit and get away with it but uh but yeah anyway so so I'd kind of gotten burnt out on CrossFit I had been something that I'd poured a lot of energy into and I got had some injuries and and uh, was just kind of getting burned out to it. So I kind of lost a hobby. And I was getting into music a little bit and, and getting into to all these things. And, and uh, it just occurred to me, uh, I had actually, I'd actually hadn't played video games up to this point. I'd kind of taken a break from video games. And my little brother who lives in California, who I never get to see, never get to talk with, was like, hey, do you want to, you should play this game PUBG with me. Like this, this PUBG game is awesome. You need to try it. It's it's absolutely badass. So I was like, okay, I'll try it. I want to connect with my brother. So I bought PUBG, and I I it, I don't think it took but a day or two, and I was hopelessly addicted to it. And it, and it didn't even become about. I think my brother stopped playing it like two or three weeks later, but. It went from me buying a game and getting back into video games just to connect with my my little brother to me like, all right, I'm ready to drop 
a thousand dollars on streaming equipment and start the streaming dream. So more like four thousand. Yeah, well, over the course <laughs> of time, yeah, you, you can pretty much spend as much as you want in this industry. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah that's that's that was kind of my start right there and then from there it just it just took off dude I mean, between between you looking so damn pretty and the chat i like i'm having trouble focusing and staying in like i know so am i, I see all, mode. These, all these jabs try hard do it his his typical thing he yeah taught, yeah he definitely left beers as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah wait so people are asking about your brother wait what like is he not around like what happened no, no, he's still around. It's it's um he he's still around. He just doesn't. He never he doesn't play video games anymore. It's actually really funny cuz he was the one who got me back into games and now he doesn't even own an Xbox. He sold his Xbox. He's hmm. he's a pastor and he's actually about to get married in August. So hmm. I think uh he he um, he's he and just not to get too much into his personal story, but I think he struggled a lot, you know graduating from college and so video games he saw it as eventually saw it as a crutch and so he decided to step out of it so i see yeah i see well no yeah no worries man yeah this is about you anyway so uh yeah but obviously there's people in chat concerned and wondering and spreading the love yeah. you know i see it filthy says i was about to say we've never we've never you probably you may have heard him you may have heard him but yeah he doesn't play anymore guys unfortunately as he's not very good anyway. <laughs> so how long have you been streaming on DLive? So DLive specifically, I've been on it since I believe mid February. So about coming on two months and, uh, it's been, it's been an incredible experience. You know, we came over from, from Facebook and Facebook was incredible for a while. Um, in fact, I remember my first, my, <laughs> Judah says, I think his brother's imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. The fire insults. Uh, Judah, did someone did somebody get me some burn cream? Jesus. I know, man. Uh, but it anyway. Feels, it kind of feels like love. I don't know. It's, it's, it is. <laughs> this, this, this is how my chat loves me. By love hurts. Jabbing at me. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, yeah. So, so we, you know, we we started on Facebook, and and that's when I met, and and everybody in here knows that's where myself, Try Hard, Saint, and Leo, and Unreal all kind of met and came together as as streamers. And uh, oh my God, your chat, dude. Shooter. It's your. It's not my chat. It's your chat. I know. I'm cracking up right now. But but we kind of we kind of all r realized an opportunity over on facebook and and facebook was great for a while and then we heard about dlive and and dlive has been absolutely dream come true platform so far what do you what do you see as the major difference with dlive and the other places that you streamed before well to be frank and i'm i'm a little more i'm a little more frank in my conversation but to be frank don't be frank uh, be violent hippie <laughs> <laughs> dad joke can we get a dad joke scoreboard i i i, I feel like i need to bake up because the author's got the dad jokes i need to catch up maybe i'll come up with some here in a little bit but all right but, be uh, all right just for just for now be <laughs> this is great i love it and in my chat knows i do dad jokes too uh i love dad jokes but but uh Facebook was kind of um, <laughs> the the growth on Facebook. We found uh, one we we found a lot of people growing wh what I would call inorganically, and I know Leo talked a little bit about it on his stream, and and I think I think for me, myself, Leo, and and I'll speak for myself here, but I th I think these other guys feel the same way. Is we felt like it wasn't a fair platform to grow on. There was a lot of people you know, who, who essentially could just pay to grow on Facebook. And uh, mm -hmm. I think for all of us, it got really, and especially myself, it got frustrating to be able to watch people look successful from, from a following standpoint and all that on Facebook, just because they had the money to pay for it and do it. And here we are, you know, we're putting our time and energy into our content, into our community. And we weren't, we didn't feel like, I don't think we're getting rewarded for that as, as well as we thought we should have. So, mm -hmm. um, that was kind of, kind of what we saw on Facebook. And I think what 
caused us to start looking at, at growing and, and expanding to other platforms. Well, it seems like you brought everyone with you from Facebook. We did. We have a we have a badass community. I cannot like say enough about our community. They're they're absolutely loyal to us in that sense, right? I mean, when we asked them to to come over to D Live and, and we we're still asking some of them to come over, but they I mean there were some and many who just, you know, just went with us. And and I think it's a testament to to not not just myself, because because I really can't take much of the credit, but just the community that myself and and our all the FB team that we stream with has has uh, has commu has made, and I think it's just it just shows that we all really support each other in all the moves that we make, and it's I, it's just it, it it gets me a little bit emotional because it is really it is really cool. We do truly have a genuinely supportive community um, that that has come over here to us with D Live, so. Well, what's what's amazing too is you guys are super supportive of streamers in general, not just of, of each other. Because, like, that's how I found you. Bearded Leo came into my chat to spread the love, and then I actually found you know your Friday night customs game and got to meet all the rest of you guys. And it's been one of the one of the funnest corners of D Live that I've actually found. Well, thank you. Thank you for saying that. And that's really, I think, the value that we try to provide is, is you know, we wanted and 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 this was my vision before I even met Leo and 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 all those other guys. And I think it's it's why we eventually came together and and have been able to do what we've done. But my vision from the start was to provide a place where we're a haven, right, where people could come, mm -hmm. and and they could escape negativity right and and they could come and they could ha and they could laugh and they could they could have a good time and they, for a second right now you know you know we all work we all have stressful days and even myself violent hippie i know on stream right i'm i'm positive all the time but even i have stressful days right and uh i just want I, that's the value i always wanted to create was a place where people felt comfortable being themselves they could have a good time I could take a load off and and just just chill. So how how did the Good Vibe Tribe start, and where where did it start? <sighs> so the Good Vibe Tribe started. Uh, it was kind of it, it was kind of a shared idea between me, Tryhard, and Leo. I would say we, me and Tryhard, always stream together, and we play a lot of PUBG together. And and uh, myself and Tryhard were playing one day and. And there was a streamer, It's Joe Mama. Some, I bet everybody in here has probably heard of It's Joe oh, yeah. Mama. But, Definitely. Good but he's, he's been very supportive of our streams. So one day we decided to add, just absolutely bust him open with, with, with love and hosts and donations and all that stuff. And uh, it was just an incredible experience. Like we, we had helped people out before. Um, in that regard, we, we hosted and, and we'd done, you know, donor raids, but when we did that and it was just like so fun to watch Joe mama's reactions and, and, uh, just hype up his chat and he just absolutely, and Joe mama's hilarious. So it was absolutely just fun to just watch him. Uh, but once we did that, it was kind of like, well, why don't we, why don't we start to do this more often? Why we're already helping people. Why don't we, why don't we create structure around it and call it something and and make it a thing and and help it to to really 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 help people instead of just doing what we were doing we we wanted to to recreate what we had recreated with joe mama so that's where it started and uh yeah and yeah. then i i came up with the name i will take credit for the name you clearly I came, came up, up with the sticker I came up with the name <laughs> and then the sticker came and then, and then good vibe tribe was born. I love it, man. And you know, I hadn't actually uh, seriously considered in joining any stream team because I wanted to try to keep, um, I didn't want to seem like I was showing favorites to anybody, you know, because I do these interviews with anybody from D live that uh, spread that love around. But when I actually found the good vibe tribe and the way you guys treat everyone, I was like, yeah, man, can I, can I join please? <laughs> oh, well, the thing about good vibe tribe, and, and I want to make this clear to even people who in here who are not, it's Joe Baba. You know, 
Yeah, it is. Hey, there's Joe Mama right there. There he is. It's Joe Mama. What's up, buddy? <laughs> dude, I'm so happy Love you're here, it. dude. So happy you're here. But but basically, it, it's not. I wouldn't. And, and Leo kind of called it this too. And 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 I I would rather re refer to it as a community because you know you can be on a stream team and still be in the good vibe tribe, right? Like sure, you sure. can, you can do whatever you want. Like we're not, we're not setting any membership standards. We're not saying that you can't go be with other people and do other things. We love, it we, really, we espouse that hippie ideal of free love, man. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I absolutely believe in that, you know, that, that people deserve the freedom to be able to do what the hell they want to do. And so it's, it's really just a place if people want to come, they can and, and participate in, in what we got going on. It is absolutely open to them, and and it's also just a place for us to to talk and to to be it, kind of build a community together, which I think is really cool. Yeah, and there's you guys have your own Discord, so if one of you wants to link uh, an invite to your Good Vibe Tribe Discord, if you want to, if you want to share it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can find a, a link real quick. Hold on. Yeah, and Bearded Leo talked about that when we just did his fireside chat, you know, about the Good Vibe Tribe and how it's not it's not specifically like a, a gaming team or some sort of, you know, thing like that. It's just anybody that wants to spread the D-Love, you know, can do that, can join and, and, and uh, be a part of it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we want it to be. We don't want it th that if we were to make it an exclusive club, it would go against the kind of community we created. We don't. We don't stop people from coming in our street. There's not a type of person that we say you can't come into our street unless they're just being blatantly negative and mean, which of course, you know, even then we're try we try to be understanding for the most part. But sure, sure. Uh, it, it's it's all about including everybody. Yeah, and you know, I like I feel like all of D Live is that beautiful, loving community of supportive individuals and and so like I just say D live, D love, right? Like, but the good vibe tribe, I mean, you guys definitely echo that sentiment. Exactly. And I think that was part of like how, how it also happened. And, and also why we're all here now is because we, we realized that the community values and our values were very aligned. And it was, it was such an easy transition for that reason. Cause I mean, we were already kind of spreading the D love before we ever even knew about D love. And, uh, and it just became, I mean, it was just like putting on a, per, a like Cinderella slipping on her shoe, man. It was a perfect fit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Cinderella is the best reference, but all right. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get some jokes for that. I got the long blonde hair. So they're like, Oh, is this hippie Cinderella? Who Remind is? me of Rapunzel, <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful That's maiden it. waiting to be rescued. <laughs> Well, Tryhard's popping a question in the chat. I don't know. Yeah, we're we're gonna save questions till the yeah. end. To be honest, guys, please uh, please remember your questions. But we definitely do a full Q and A segment. Of course, with your your ruckus audience there, Violet, we may have to break the rules. <laughs> They're a rowdy bunch. I can't control them. <laughs> Did Cinderella have to cut their toes off to fit in the shoe? Jesus, Bess. <laughs> Bess, you just can't get good help these days. <laughs> That's too so, funny. So I noticed when I watched you stream that you, you're like, you have all of these incredible like sharks attacking and all kinds of craziness happening. Like what got you into that? And, and how'd you learn how to do that? Well, so, so I'm an engineer. I, me, I think most people in my community know this, but before I became a full-time streamer, I was a me mechanical engineer. I went to Texas Tech and mm. uh, it took nice. me five five long years, but I did get my mechanical engineering degree. And- uh, Nice, congratulations, man. I've always been, thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. I've, I've always been very technically minded. Like I've been, I've, <laughs> this is gonna sound, uh, this might sound a little arrogant, but I believe that I'm good at solving problems. I'm good at figuring things out. Sure. And uh, I think that's, you know, a lot of people tease engineers and they say they're, they're, they're good at math or whatever. And I think it's broader than that. I think engineers really 
are good problem solvers. And I think what I learned at school and what I, the value that I got from, from my degree was I learned how to, to figure things out and solve problems. And so I think what gives me an edge in, in my stream and my, and, and, and what I do is that I'm able to really figure things out and dive into the details. And mm -hmm. with the, uh, with all the dono stuff and all that, that was just, a culmination of my curiosity as a streamer you know i i thought about how do i how do i thank the viewers for donating to me in a unique way right that's that was what i always wanted to do and that that was what the idea that kind of spawned all of that was i want i don't want to just say thank you you know i want to really like show these people one that i appreciate them donating but i also want to make them laugh and do it in a unique way so you know, just, just through tinkering and, and, you know, hours of YouTube and, and all that stuff. I like Bert. Uh, he said, hippie doesn't tell you what time it is. He tells you how the clock is built. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's, pretty good. It's yeah. always now friends. It's always now your clock and Mert, is wrong. Exactly. Yes. That Dude, I'm a, I'm one. an and aviation I, electrical engineer that I think that's why you and I get, have such great talks. Absolutely, and I and I know you're you're a spiritual spiritually minded like me too. So I think we're getting think, into that. Hopefully, buddy. we get into that. Hopefully, we're we get, get into, into that. that. But uh, but yeah, it just it's just a result of me tinkering, you know, and figuring stuff out. And I mean, if you saw all the gadgets and gadgets I have and all the crap that I've I figured out, is I mean, there and 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 to be fair, I mean, you know, I learned a lot from YouTube, the school of YouTube, and the school sure. the school of Google. So. There's not, there's not a whole lot you can't figure out if you do enough research on, on Google and YouTube. So I'll do one of my kids came out of the bedroom one time and he said, Hey dad, check this out. And I heard, and then this dart went and stuck in the wall right in front of my face. He hid like YouTube, how to build a blow dart gun. Oh dude, that's, that's and cool. And built it out of stuff he found in his room. And then he decided to fire it at his dad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's perfect it, use so. of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube is a powerful tool, man. It is, man. I, I, I've, uh, I hate to say it, but you know, I spent a lot of money on a degree <laughs> and, and, uh, there's a lot of good st stuff you can learn for free and a lot cheaper on YouTube. So best of the worst wants to know why I didn't let Thank him you, wear Jordan. his hair See during you, the interview, but you get to wear yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh man He's, i'm still laughing at all these comments right now dude, people are going off man i am loving it big mike in the chat what's up buddy shout out big mike i hope you're here healing healing well big mike yeah I ju we just got we just got big mike onto game of thrones i saw he's watching his first episode of game of thrones so we've got another convert yeah i've never actually today. seen any of them but i heard so much talk about it yesterday i don't know i might i love dragons so Now's the time, my friend. I heard Now's there's the dragons involved. That sounds got my attention. There you go. There's still giants and dragons on this planet, people. I don't know what you heard, but that <laughs> shit's real. <laughs> <laughs> Filmed on location. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in magic. I believe in magic for sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so yeah. Yeah, I'm the worst, huh? <laughs> Best of the worst said... <laughs> Joe doesn't watch TV or play Pokemon or watch PewDiePie. All those things are true. So like, <laughs> flame away, guys. Flame away. <laughs> well, I, I, I can't uh, can't really get mad at you for not playing Pokemon. I, I don't think I've played Pokemon or watched PewDiePie in a long time either. I didn't even so. know what it was. Like uh, I was interviewing Flo Driver last weekend, and she had a Poke, Pokeball, I think it's called, on her shirt. And I was like, hey, what's that? Oh my God, she lit me up. <laughs> She's like, you don't know what Pokemon is? How is this possible? Yeah, yeah. She was. Wait, is that is that? Wait a minute. What's going on in the chat? Is that LT Zonda in I don't a know. towel? We got some... That is LT Zonda, almost nearly nearly why, naked. Why is chat. he out of the high All right, we can't. They're gonna try. They're they're trying to derail us, and it. They it, are, it, dude. They it, are. It they're... may end up happening, but we're gonna have to. <laughs> You're using the wrong sex there if you're trying to distract us men, okay? Yeah, it, well, I don't. It depends on the man, I guess. That's true. That's true. That's true. I mean, I, you know, I, I like ladies, but dude, you got, you got some sexy eyes. I'm keep getting distracted. <laughs> keep getting, I can't look at the screen. I, I can't. I forget my next question. 
That's why I wore the the the, the colorful. Tri- I'm I'm peacocking right now. That's what I'm doing. Ah, right that's this what it's is, called. This, I'm just trying to trying to peacock right now. It's working. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. All right, all right. We we completely lost focus. All right, so. Yeah. <laughs> on uh when i when i got bearded leo on the podcast we we talked about this uh mythical beast known as friday night customs and uh he kept bringing up your name said i don't know you were important or something you, maybe you were involved i don't know just just wonder if you want to talk about a that. little bit a little bit i was i so so i have to give pretty much all the credit to leo right because he is the one who started it now now leo started it leo had had a had a great idea and and Leo kind of kind of got the initial thing going and I I would say from my perspective what I did is I recognize you know the value and and the value that Leo was providing I recognized its potential I uh, and and I just really really wanted to be involved and and uh and I I told that to Leo and I I told Leo I said you know I think you've got something really amazing going on here and and i want to help in any way that i can and i think um you know leo particularly in the beginning you know saw that that i cared about it i was i was helping promote it i was was coming up with ideas was doing all this and then eventually you know i think he he rewarded me by by saying let dude let's be co-hosts let's do this together i need your help um with 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 organizing it you you've you've done a good job helping me systemize it and i think you deserve to be be a co-host so so then it then it became became the the leo and and hippie thing and 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 of course you know we've we've had tremendous tremendous support as well from from try hard and and really it's just like a whole team effort uh from from myself try hard filthy saint and unreal and and they step in when when we we need help or you know when leo or myself gets too drunk or, or someone passes out or, or whatever the case may be, uh, they, those guys are always there to step in, and it's just a, a big team effort. And, well, but that's I, where it all started. I really yeah. like how you guys play off each other too. Like you and Bearded Leo, you can tell you guys are friends, right? Like you, the way you interact, the way you talk, the way you pick up the ball when he drops it, or vice versa. It's it's nice. It's in like that's how I actually got to meet most of the the Good Vibe Tribe was dropping in on a uh, Friday night customs match. Oh well, yeah, and and I don't want to I don't want to get too into mine and relate Leo's relationship because everybody's going to start thinking we have a, a bromance, but You do have a bromance. We oh, we do have a just bromance. Admit I'm it. just going to get it out there, just guys. Just admit it. I admit it, chat. Me and Leo have a bromance, too. <laughs> I can't hide it any longer. All you need is a bear skin <laughs> rug and a fire. <laughs> let, let it be known. But no, me and Leo, we've always vibed really well together and it's always just been good like every time me and leo talk like we're just we're on the same page like he understands me i understand him but i think where me and leo really connect is like we learn a lot from each other like what what the and i uh, here we go on my bromance that i'm about to profess my love but i learned a <laughs> lot from leo i learned i've learned a lot as a streeter from from leo and uh you know i don't think i would be as good of a streamer if i hadn't had 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 a friend like leo to to kind of be himself in his own way and do his own thing so it's uh it's been a, a very positive relationship uh myself myself and leo and i could say the same about you know tryhard and and uh, all those guys me and tryhard have become very good friends over over the the months and i've learned a lot from tryhard and i I appreciate them all, but yeah, me and Leo have definitely fostered a very great friendship over our time together. And we do, we talk, we talk all week and we have very candid conversations with each other. And I feel like, you know, it's to that level of, of true comfortability where we, I could really call him like a, a true friend. So, well, and I think this is a good p- point to parlay into, we, we'd like to talk about um, how it is that you become a successful streamer and what you would what you what kind of tips and tricks you would give to other people to become a successful streamer and you're kind of hitting on part of it which is like not only do you stream but you also support each other in real ways off of the computer but absolutely 
So I, w- I could go on about this for days because I think there's it. a lot That's of things. That's why you're here, man. All right. So Miss Bearded Leo says, Travis is the only one I'll let my hubby go to. <laughs> That's funny. And thank you for that monthly uh, sub, Miss Bearded. You guys are the, you and your husband awesome. are incredible people. She's awesome. Uh, but so I, I think it's a lot of things. I think it's a lot of things, right? Um, first and foremost, just, just parlaying off of what we just talked about, right? It's important. It's important in my mind, no man is an island, right? So to me, uh, having friends in the industry and people that care about your success and and care about your well-being as a streamer has, has proven, and, and I didn't necessarily know this when I started, and I didn't understand the value of it when I started, but just having people that care about your success and and are there in your streams and support you and you support them and and just having those types of people in your in your in your circle is is just absolutely all the value and 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 I can I can honestly sit here today and say that if it wasn't for for people like Bearded Leo, people like Unreal 84, people like Tryhard, I wouldn't be nearly as big as I am hmm. right now. I wouldn't be even be close and I I'll tell the story cuz because I always love to plug in real for this, but when I was first starting on on Facebook, Unreal eighty four had I think over three thousand followers. He'd had a lot of success, success, excuse me. And I think I was I was a little baby streamer. I was at like one hundred and fifty or something. And and Unreal came in and, and and I had I and I and this is another thing we can talk about, but but. Uh, Unreal was selfless enough to come in and he he brought me kind of brought me in under his wing and he he said, you know, I like your content and he asked me to play and then he shared my stream and from there it was just kind of some some explosive growth from there. I mean, that was really my start. And so I'm I'm forever in debt to to Unreal for what he did for me and and then from there I met Leo and Tryhard and we all just kind of helped each other grow and I think that's where we got a lot of our success in the beginning was just we cared about each other's growth and and as a result we all grew a lot together um but the th- second thing i'll say and this was this was i think key to my success is i didn't go into unreal's chat the the way i created a relationship with unreal was not by going into his chat and asking you know hey can you share me i didn't go in and do any of that i didn't say hey can can you shout out my page i didn't say hey you want to follow for follow i didn't say any of those things what I did is I went into Unreal Stream and I provided value. And that's that's how you create positive relationships in the streaming community is you go in and you don't try and take value. You don't go and try and take streamers from them. You try and provide value. And I went in there and I shared a stream. I donated him stars. I talked to him. Those are the kind of things that I did. And, and, and I think a lot of streamers make the mistake of growing, uh, of trying to go in and take value. Mm. You know, they, they don't want to, they don't want to create anything. And then that's not how you create positive relationships. You go in, you show positive love, you don't ask for anything. And, and that's, that's the real way to, to make true relationships and as a result grow uh, from those relationships. Not only as a person, not only, you know, but as a streamer. So I think that's another key thing that a lot of people don't get right is is they don't they go they don't go in and try and provide value and and that's I I can't take full credit for that because that's you know something I've learned from mentors and 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 books that I've read but that's an absolute key always go in and provide value you don't take value yeah I mean, and there's you, people like, in here I was oh, going to say speak on if you would speak on the follow for follow crowd and your opinion on that so so my opinion. I'll just, just full candid how I feel sure, about sure. it. I, I think for maybe someone who is just starting out and you're trying to connect with someone at your level, it, it's not a necessarily a bad thing, but that's like a 1% situation. I'd say 99% of the time, follow for follow, really, it's hollow growth in my mind. And, mm-hmm. and I don't have anything against it, right? If you want to follow for follow, that's fine. But what I think you're doing to yourself with follow for follow is exactly what the people on Facebook were doing by buying followers. 
or buying ads and basically paying to get attention for followers is is that you're you're attracting someone to your stream who's who doesn't care about your stream hasn't been positively impacted by your stream mm -hmm. and therefore has really no reason to ever come back and uh and i think if you do it too much if you do it too much it can actually start to hurt your stream well the d live and staff have actually said flat out they had a uh... Fat-Headed Noob has a panel every weekend with other um, guardians and staff and streamers, and he they flat out said they will not support spam channels, follow for follow channels, and you will not be approved for a verified partner. Well, and, and to be honest, if you're if you're a spam channel, you're kind of running your channel like an asshole. I mean, let's be real. Like, you don't you don't spamming is an asshole move. Like, no matter where you go, mm -hmm. like you shouldn't spam. It's 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 taking over the chat. It's it's selfish, and uh, it's not a way to create positive relationships. But <laughs> Nikki Nuclear, <Jesus. laughs> I love Nikki. Did you see that comment? I'm not gonna, I, uh, I wasn't gonna read it out loud. <laughs> Calm down, Violet. I love it. Calm down. I love it. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I mean, normally when she's in your channel, Violet, clearly that's you know it's the Dude, inverse. Nick, Nikki but, uh, Nikki is very. She's very particular and and moisture is a key part of, of who she is so. moist we great so, you're the first we, person who said the word moist <laughs> on, my, on my podcast she's hashtag moist af that's too funny man oh my god um, Here's, here we go nikki is one of the funniest people ever i swear to god uh her and genie they're they're two great streamers they make me laugh hilariously yeah so what but um, again that goes back to what you were just talking about which was provide some sort of um content right try to try to add to what's happening not take away yeah yeah exactly and 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 you have to think about it that way not just with the relationships but with your 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 crowd right how are you providing value in the marketplace you have to look at it as like a, a ground right a, a ground where 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 everybody's sticking their hand up trying to get the viewer's attention right and how are you providing value for for the viewer are you are you are they learning from your gameplay that's one that's the most obvious one right but not everybody is ninja not everybody is is right, shroud right. Well, and so, not everybody is streaming games, right? Some people exactly. paint art, some people cook, some people play music, some people have podcasts. Exactly. So so how are you providing value at the end of the day? And is that value valuable is is really something really important to think about. And and when someone comes in, you want to always be thinking of, of special and unique ways to provide value. And for me personally, um, you know, my value, I think, is in, in, in the atmosphere that I provide. And it's also in, in I, think, I think I provide, I think it's a mix of things, but I think I provide good gameplay. And I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to toot my own horn too much here, but I provide good play and play. I provide a positive environment. I make people laugh, which is, is important. And, uh, it's just right now, right? There's no one thing that's going to make you stand out. It's 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 going to be a mix of, of of a mix of value, a mixed bag of value that you have to bring it and in, into the game. And I think that's what's really important is 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 learning you know what's valuable, and uh, learning how to how to bring value not only to to your relationships but to your, the to the people who watch your stream. Because they see value, they're going to follow, and they're going to want to want to do all those things. Yeah, and actually, guys, I we've got so many of the good vibe tribe here. Can we please help my friend? He is a new streamer. His name's Crypto Gamer. He's uh, he's a Jamaican guy, and man, does he have a beautiful heart! Like he he needs help learning how to stream, how to do it well. Right, the technical advice I've been trying to help him out, but. If you, I want to bring another beautiful soul into the tribe, and his name is Crypto Gamer. So, by all means, guys, please spread the love there. But uh, so, so violent. Like, obviously, it's so weird to call you violent. I think I'm going to call you hippie. You can call me hippie, yeah. Um, so we, I like to ask if you, if you don't mind sharing, what's your first name? My first name is Travis. Okay, because we, you know, the, a big part of what we're doing here is trying to humanize streamers, right? Like you're really good about connecting with your audience. 
But a lot of times streamers get so busy playing the game or a lot of right there's a lot of gamers here they get so involved with the game that they forget to to interact with their audience and that's one thing that you do really really well what did he say uh, drop the discord again joe oh yeah oh, said, here, discord. oh okay here for uh the good so, vibe so crypto can get in and we we can help crypto out if he gets in there for sure if we got a line he can ask any questions yeah crypto definitely follow that link over to discord um i have to yeah. copy and paste it into my discord uh when i click on the link it takes me to a web browser and i it doesn't ever work for me but uh yeah guys that link that's in chat right now discord that's the good vibe tribe um we just try to bring in well, anybody's welcome, right? But we reach yeah. out to new people, new streamers. He's a new streamer. He's in Jamaica. The um, They don't have the same, um, I don't want to get too personal on him, but they, you know, they don't have the same type of finances and opportunities yeah. available in Jamaica that we have in other parts of the world. So uh, definitely like to love on the people that are, that have a big heart. Hell yeah. And, and, and and you know and that's another good thing and we'll we'll get into your question but i just do want to say that's one other thing that's important for other street people to realize is your mindset as a streamer is so important right and i think a lot of people get down on themselves because they think they have to spend five grand or you know whatever to be a good streamer and that's not true like you you if you you if you put in if you're creative enough if you put in enough work and time you can create a quality stream on a budget and there's there's millions of people who have done it man or I don't want to say millions there's a lot of streamers who have been successful mm -hmm. and 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 not had what other stream the luxuries that other streamers have had so it's just another thing but but anyway I'm gonna give him a follow too. I don't know if I follow him yeah because like the I want to tell you guys about crypto because you know obviously this shows about you violent hippie but i know you're you're just full of love and like to love on people so crypto came into my channel and i was playing a crypto card game uh they call it steam monsters right now i think they're going to change the name soon but um, i found out about it from some streamers that went to pax east with d live um, but i was struggling didn't know what i was doing don't know much about cryptocurrency and Crypto Gamer actually got on Discord voice chat with me, explained what I was doing, explained how to, you know, to help. And I was like, man, this guy doesn't know me. He's never met me before. And the very first thing he wanted to do was help and love well, on that's, me. That's super awesome. And that's the kind of, that fits right in line with us. So Crypto Gamer, come in, dog. Come yep. in, step in the dough, man. Join yep. our community, man. We'll help you out. And maybe you can teach me a thing or two about crypto because I don't know shit about it either. So. <laughs> and and if you guys love a good Jamaican accent, uh, crypto is your man. He's just it's just nice I to do. listen to his voice. I do. My chat knows I love my accents. In, in fact, when I spectate my games, I always do this cheesy like British accent. Anytime I'm like doing commentating, and it's, it's let's fun. hear it. Let's hear it. Oh gosh, I, I I don't I don't know if it'll be any good now. Well, if I'm you not said announcing you were going like... to answer a question for us, so maybe answer the question with the British accent. Okay. So, so what's the question again? I, Dude, I forget what, what it was. Okay, now if any of you have ever been in Violent Hippie stream, you know that sometimes it's hard to stay focused. And uh, yes. I've already got, I've already forgotten the question as well. I think it was about community and or engaging with people. I think that's yeah, what yeah. It was well, about. that was right. About, that was the bane. Yeah. yeah. You, so you do it so, well. So what is it? What is it that you do? And well, so. So I got some secret weapons. I got some secret weapons, and and a lot of people, my chat should know about this, but, but um, that doesn't sound like a I, British accent to me. Oh, that's that's wrong. I forgot <laughs> about my British accent. Um, <laughs> so so essentially, what I do is um, is I, <laughs> I first of all, I've got an ace in my pocket, and that's Bearded Leo. I've learned a lot from him watching his stream, and um, he's a great interactor. And he's absolutely incredible at <laughs> at uh, interacting with people. So I've learned a lot from him. I've learned a lot from other streamers, and I've also uh, I've I've spent a lot of time. And, I, and now I'm going to get serious, um, even with his accent. But I've I have 
Uh, I've been a Toastmaster for a very long time. Oh, nice. You are a uh, Toastmaster. Yes. So nice. I, I have been a Toastmaster for uh, a Toastmaster. Calm a toast down. Aster. <laughs> Maybe, you should toastmaster. Switch. Maybe you should switch to your uh, sports commentating voice. I don't know. This British thing is a little too cheeky. <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but but I have been a Toastmaster for a long time. That's helped me tremendously. You know, I've been in the oil and gas industry, so I've learned how to moist as fuck. <laughs> Dude, you got... <laughs> Do but, you see I'm... the kind of people that you influence, I love it. man? Look at this. I love it. It's too funny, man. Toast... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a professional uh, Toastmaster. <laughs> toast... I'm a professional disaster right now when it comes to, to speaking. But... Dude, I'm turning red from smiling <laughs> and laughing so much. I love it. Oh gosh, but but yeah, man, and 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 you may not know this, Joe, but I told most of my my community and stuff. I actually just did uh, my best friend's wedding, and it was it was the biggest speaking engagement I've ever done. I officiated it, and it was over a hundred people. And I mean, it's just all of that, and then and then of course you know just just culminating an attitude of like caring about people because because at the end of the day, right, like we're here to connect with our viewers. Like we, we, we want that human connection uh, w with the people that are watching us. Like uh, it's weird with, I'm not gonna say it's weird, but, but it just, it makes the stream more enjoyable when I'm, when people in the chat are there with me that I, that I know and that I like and that I, I respect and that I've connected with on a, on a level. Um, and, and I think, you know, that's part of it is that, right. I mean, part of it is, is we want to connect with people because it makes the stream more enjoyable for us, but we also know that, you know, people come in, right. And, and, and I think what we notice and what I notice getting into the game is people, a lot of streamers don't, especially the bigger ones, they don't they don't interact with their chat. They don't treat them like people a lot of the time and they don't appreciate them for being there and appreciate the fact that they showed up. And, and especially with like donos and things like that, they don't, they don't really truly appreciate what's going on in their chat. And, and the fact that this person is, is complimenting you just by being there and, and saying, Hey, you know, you're entertaining enough for me to sit here and watch. Yeah. And that's actually, uh, I don't, I want to interject. I definitely want to, you to continue on that but i want to interject here and say guys when you try to grow too fast the problem is you dump so many people into your chat that you can't keep up with it and you you will not have as good of a time if you're not able to read your chat and interact with your audience right and and i actually get stressed out this is a, an a, admission for it but i actually get stressed out because i try to read every single comment in my chat and respond to it every single and sometimes it sounds like i'm reading a book at like you know if you ever like you ever listen to audible yes you can like put the audible speed on like 3.0 and it's like sounds like a like a freaking the the author is racing to get to the end that's kind of what i uh, sound like sometimes i think because i'm trying to read so fast or to respond but sh shameless plug all my books are on <laughs> audible and ibooks there you go dude me, me too man <laughs> lazy readers unite baby let's go <laughs> or you know what we could call it productive readers because because yeah, I don't know if you're like me, but I like to do things and read. So, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, it's it's just, um, I, I I don't know. I mean, I want people to know that I care about them. I mean, I don't want so I I, I don't want someone. I actually it, it hurts me when I when I because sometimes I, I'm a blonde, <laughs> as you can see. Sometimes I forget to read a chat or I forget to respond or something happens in the game. And and I actually feel bad when I don't respond because it's like, you know, I just, I, I, I imagine that person like feeling hurt because I didn't respond to them. So it's, it's just important for me that I treat people with respect. And I also am setting an example, right? Not a whole lot of people realize that as the person doing the stream, you are a leader you're setting an example for your chat and people learn from you. And, and if you, and, and we've learned this before, but if, 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 if you start to set a bad example, people will follow it. Mm -hmm. And, and I want people to know this is how I, this is how you treat people while you're in my stream. 
this is how you treat people while you're in my stream. That's why I treat people the way that I do. That's why I interact with them. That's why I care about them. Because I want people in my chat to do the same thing for each other. Well, well, don't tell Bearded Leo, but I found you through him, and now I watch you more than him. <laughs> oh, we'll keep that a secret. We'll keep right, that yeah. a secret between don't, you and me. Don't tell him. <laughs> Actually, I, I have three monitors. I see that comment. <laughs> I, have, I have three monitors, so I have you on one screen, I have Leo on another, and then I always pull up another member of the tribe on my third. There you go. Good vibe tribe, man. That's that. Well, we appreciate you know, Joe. It's it's been an absolute pleasure to to get to know you, man. So far. Oh, and, dude. Uh, yeah, he said so far. Hey, hey well, <laughs> who, who know? You know, there's infinite possibilities, just as well as I do. And I, 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 I was gonna say that I, I hope it leads to many other great things in, in the beginning. Oh, well, the are game clearly game. already right. We've you yeah. heard it. Leo's been on the podcast. You've been on the podcast. We've got Filthy Saint coming up right after you. We've got, I mean, there's basically it's see, I, when I reach out to streamers to, to come on the live podcast, it's all about finding people who espouse that love in, in their own lives. And it bleeds over onto the stream, right? Like not people yeah. that are just faking the funk for the stream when the camera's yeah. on. And well, so yeah. many of you guys fit that bill. Well, and, and that goes, you know, going back to, to the other question, you know, that's another key, right? Is being genuine. Yeah. Like, like being genuine is so, so key. There's a lot of that in this industry. Um, a lot of fake love and, and ass kissing. And uh, that's to put it bluntly, but, you know, I think it's, I think it's important to actually be who you are. One, because uh, one because you don't you don't want people to love you for something that you're not if, if i were to be someone else and people were to fall in love with me being a, a person that i'm not then i'm setting myself up for failure because if i'm constantly having to turn on that camera and pretend i'm gonna burn myself out so so fast yep um and and uh, so i think that's that's a key and then the second thing right is just integrity and this goes back to the follow and follow for follow and all that stuff right like integrity is just a, a key part of i think attracting people to your stream if people think that you're being shady they get a weird vibe from you a shady vibe from you that they, they will feel it i mean mm -hmm. this is this is a feel game right everybody whether they're aware of it or not when you're watching someone you're you're experiencing emotions and and uh if you feel good, you're probably going to stick around. And if you feel bad, you're not. It's 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 plain and simple. So integrity and and being, being uh and being authentic and being liked for who you are, I think is 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 absolutely important. Well, I think it's a testament to you how many people in the chat are are verified partners and global partners. I mean, like and and even the ones that aren't, you you know they're going to be any day now. And I feel it just proves that love and that community and that, that we all support each other. Absolutely, man. And, and, and that's what a true community is about. And it's, it's cool. Like if I could just like, if I could just like smile and, and, and cheese for a little bit, like our community is so freaking cool. Like we just have a badass community and everybody is so super freaking supportive and, and, I, it just it just blows my mind where we were and and how how we were how I, I started and how, what it's become it's just become this incredible absolutely incredible positive community and an absolute dream come true and I really couldn't be happier to be honest so so we've been going an hour and I said after an hour you and me we're gonna get to uh, to get into some some existential you know, uh, reality type of talk and manifesting your ideal reality. And yeah, so I, I'll let you go ahead, man, go ahead. Well, we can, and we can make it relevant, right? Because sure. in my mind, in my mind, it, right. It's, it's, it's your beliefs about yourself and, and reality that create your reality. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for me, you know, I've, I, I, I've, to get a little bit get a little into my personal life so my journey into self-improvement started with a bad breakup as so many people's do um i i had a really bad breakup in college and 
um, I had to look at myself in the mirror and, and I made a, I remember it distinctly. I made a list of all the things I wanted to change about myself and how I needed to improve if I was ever going to have a successful relationship with, with a female. And, uh, that was where it all started. And, and I've been on a long journey since then. I started in the church and, and, and I was, I was a Christian growing up Methodist and, uh, I started to, to do that and, and then I got into Eastern philosophy and I've studied a lot of Eastern philosophy. I've been to, to meditation retreats, I've done it all. And, and to me, what it all boils down to, I think is, is um, well, I, I guess I would say having positive beliefs and, and, and learning how to be aware of what's going on inside you. And being able to change that change is hard. Change is super hard. Change is scary. It is hard, mm -hmm. and and you know we're I know everybody in here because we're all human has struggled with addiction or or has something about themselves that they don't like, and uh, it's like no one ever no one ever came to you in your life and sh gave you a manual on how to live, on how to be happy, on how to change. These are all things that despite, you know, there being 8 billion people in the world, this is not common knowledge, uh, how to, how to, how to, how to improve yourself, how to, how to be a better person. And, and that to me is, is what is it, having that knowledge and, and me and now having a platform to spread that knowledge, I think is, is super amazing. But for me right now, I'm studying a lot on, on addiction and, and, and habits and, uh, Without, uh, we could really get deep. Well, I was going to say, like, I, I before we, I lose my thought, I just wanted to say, like, something that I've learned being on this esoteric journey for a while and writing, you know, I've written 10 books, but I refuse to write a self-help book. And I'll, the, I found a quote this morning. I'm going to read it to you by Alan Watts. It's the best quote I've ever found on self-help books. And he says, anybody who tells you that he has some way of leading you to spiritual enlightenment is like somebody who picks your pocket and sells you your own watch. Mm, and this it, is a, interesting. Right. And, the, and, the, and I can clarify it a little bit. The reason I've never written a self-help book, but I instead choose to write about my own journey, is that every one of us has a unique perspective and a unique reality based on our perception and also past experiences. So Absolutely. We, there aren't many, many, many paths to enlightenment. There's one path to enlightenment. We're just on different places on that path with a different perception. Right. And your thoughts create the possibility of your reality, but it's your words and actions that actually manifest your reality. Right. Uh, absolutely. And, and yeah, man. And, 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 and the way you view, the way you view the world is so key to how you you act and speak in it right and i think that's where i started is is altering my beliefs about the world and and i think for spiritual growth you that's really where you have to start right you have to truly really start at the base level and that's what do i believe about the world and i think for for me personally the most growth that i've seen on my on my path and 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 I absolutely do, you know, believe in in, in spiritual growth, and I think I, I think it's crazy. I think we're all. I think the world, the fact that the world is divided is kind of insane to me. You know, the fact that we have all these these religious sects and and um, and ideologies. I, I think I think it's kind of kind of crazy because I really think we're all trying to do the same thing. That's why I have a lot of sympathy for people and and what happens in the world is because. Um, because I really believe that, that we're all just craving one thing and that's spiritual growth and, and, and the path of enlightenment. And, 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 you know, those are all spiritual words and they sound funny. And, and to a lot of people in America, you know, they don't really resonate, but it's all, all, we're all shooting for the same thing. And, and, uh, I, th I think for me personally, again, going back to, to, to the beliefs, the, the, the thing that I've been focusing on most is is auditing what I truly believe in and getting back to streaming, you know, it, um, I would say that one thing that I've, I've learned on my spiritual path that I think is, is key, not only to, to my, my growth as a human, but to my stream is seeing it as an opportunity to grow. 
And and every every time I turn on that stream button, right, I make tons of mistakes. I mean, everybody knows, you know, that on Fridays I like to take lots of shots. I do some stupid things. I say some stupid things. And uh Tryhard says he's gotta go see you, Tryhard. Aloha, friend. Yeah, and, yeah I'm, uh, I'm gonna upload this to YouTube when we're done so you, you can catch the rest, buddy. Cool. But but that was one of the, the key things that I learned was was learning to see every single thing that happened to me as a growth opportunity. And it's absolutely made me grow into this. this I think this I, I view myself as a leader anyway um, and someone who who uh, who has a positive message and can can be a positive example in this community. Um, yeah, but, we're, dude, the, we're out here trying to help people, you know, like live better lives, not just entertain them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, uh, I, 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 when I look out in the world, I see a lot of people who just misunderstand each other. Mm -hmm. That's what I see. And part of my mission as a streamer, right, is, is to bring everyone to get together. Yep. No matter what what you believe no matter what your background is and because because really you know and and this is probably something you've realized in your journey too if you go to the core of it right we're all one we're all the same we all world citizen yeah and and uh, i absolutely believe that with my heart man and and you know i was in a deep dark place a long time ago and uh you know you've studied a lot of eastern philosophy and, and all of that and that I mean, I, I used to be on depression meds. I used to be, you know, highly addicted to a lot of things. I used to, to take vibe to take Vivans in college as prescribed Vivans and that that messed me up a lot. And and I've overcome all of that. And the, the reason is because I started to to walk down the spiritual path and I started to look at what I relied on outside of myself to 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 fix the hurt and how I avoided the pain that was going on inside me. And it's, it's been an incredible journey, man. It's been an incredible journey. Well, and you're still on it, my friend. You're still on I it. Still am. it. It never ends, right? It never ends. And I've read a lot of crazy books that people in here probably wouldn't be into. I'd probably like your book. Um, uh, I, cause I actually did read a little bit about it. Uh, the, which, the, which uh, book are you afraid the of? one with your grandparents with your, about the your healing, grandparents, the, the healing, healing power, power of love. love yeah yeah and and when you learn that type of things love you too nikki and jd love you too girls but yeah man it's it's uh i've done a complete 180 because of of what i've seen and what i've experienced and it's really crazy you know i still feel like an infant uh as far as as knowledge and wisdom goes and 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 in the world and you know i've probably read hundreds of books in my in my life uh hundreds of books on self-help and and i'm just getting to the point now where i feel like i kind of understand the world and i'm I, i'm starting to understand how to become the person that i want to be and i think it's starting to show in the stream and my relationships and, and everywhere so it's it's pretty cool man well the thing that like the healing power of love that book I, I basically moved to Alaska. I gave up everything I owned with no notice to move to Alaska to save their lives because they were in the ICU and the ER, the same hospital at the same time. And my mom basically called and said, say goodbye. And I was like, yeah, that's not that's not acceptable. Wow. So I it took me about a week and a half to get rid of the house and my truck and the motorcycle and my two dozen fish tanks and everything else in the house. And I basically became completely of service up like 24 hours a day. It took four months, but I went to every doc's appointment. I helped make every meal. I helped clean the house. I changed their lives in real ways. But so I was talking to one of my older brothers about that. And I said, well, I'm doing ionic foot baths and essential oils and, and cooking different and all these things. Cause I'm autistic. Right. So I was kind of listing like yeah. the, the literal things and, and he just stopped and he goes, Joe, it's the healing power of love is what's helping your grandparents. Like they're wow. helping our grandparents. It's the healing yeah. power of love. And I went, whoa, like I had to go outside and sit down in the sunshine yeah. and like think about that for a minute, you know? And I, yeah. And once that sets in for you, it's so freaking powerful, man. It'll blow you out of the water. Like 
because and, and, and when it really becomes powerful is when you actually see it right because it's easy to sit here and say that right like everybody's seen the instagram you know fancy posters right where it's like love is this and love and you know that's that's almost become kind of kind of mainstream to like say that kind of stuff but when you actually witness it in your life and 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 i've got i'm lucky i've got a lot of 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 great friends you know and, and i've witnessed it in my own in my own life but um but when you when you see the transformative power of love and being grateful and 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 auditing your thoughts and and only having those 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 powerful positive emotions and cultivating those in your life what it can do for you and the people around you it's it's freaking incredible well and gratitude is a that's a big big word yeah it is and and i've i'm i'm super fortunate i have a couple people in my life i actually have a good buddy his name's ali abu Zalam, and i he may be watching secretly i don't know but he's um uh, he is he's in this the cbd business he sells a lot of of great uh, great cbd products but he started something uh, and he's he's got a, a decent following on instagram but it's called dat grat and it's hashtag dat grat and i'm gonna i'm gonna plug him here because it's absolutely he's been my leading example here with with gratitude and and help me learn you know just how important it is to to cultivate those positive emotions because if if and this is going to be hard for some people to hear but what i learned when i was depressed and anxious is that i cultivated that in my own life mm -hmm. by allowing the thoughts that i was thinking to to occur and not auditing that and and mm -hmm. in the same way that you can cultivate depression that you could cultivate anger that you can call you can also cultivate love you can cultivate positivity you could cultivate gratitude and that's kind of what you have to do yeah. you have to to take control of that and uh he he does it every single day he posts on his instagram you know what he's grateful for and he's started an amazing community and i kind of when i started my community i used that kind of as an example as 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 how i wanted to to do my thing and i wanted to create my own unique way of 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 helping people be happier and, and setting that example. So well, something I want to echo and just say it out loud more than once is self-talk is incredibly important, right? Like I've been in other streamers channels and people start donating and loving on them and they're like, whoa, 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 I don't deserve this. This is this is too much, you know, and I'm like, I mean, I get what you're saying, but you're wrong. It is not too much. It's exactly what you need. Love, love is supposed to be overwhelming. I agree. And, and a lot of it, and, and that, that is, that is the thing, man, is we live in a, a, a world where people are secretly, they're hurting. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are, you know, everybody has been through something that has hurt them. It doesn't matter. And, and this is something I learned too, along my journey is that pain is relative, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there's people who have been through the worst of the worst, right? If you, if we were to sit here and compare, I, I mean, I know people who have been through the worst of the worst, and they're absolutely happy. Well, there's right? two ways that that can go. Like, I mean, I was beaten and raped as a child, in forced child labor camps and orphanages and foster homes and all this stuff wow. on and on. And there's two ways that you can go. You can become bitter and angry at the world and lash out because you're trying to protect yourself from more hurt. Or you can become more empathetic and kind and insightful and, right. and appreciate the struggle, right? Life is chaos and is struggle. And, yeah. And then just love on people more. Absolutely. I agree. And, and this is something that I, it took me a little while to learn, but you're absolutely right. And, and you don't, what you learn basically is that, you know, you do those things for yourself because that's what's going to make you that's what's going to heal all of that is if you cultivate those positive mindsets around those things, if you find the silver lining, right? Mm -hmm. There's, 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 you could have found a million reasons to be mad about what happened to you, right? Well, but, and I, I did for a while. Yeah. But what is that going to do to you? And I think that's what I can what tell you, you and exactly. I realized. It made me 300 pounds. It made me clinically depressed. It made me suicidal. Exactly. So at some point, right, you have to look yourself in the mirror and say, yeah, this happened. But 
what is best for me in the long well, run. Well, it is doesn't it best define for me? you. It doesn't define you. Exactly. It doesn't. And, and, when, and that's powerful once you realize that, that it doesn't define you. Mm -hmm. And it's not who you are. You aren't your past. You aren't the things that happened to you. You're something way deeper than that. And it took me a long time to understand forgiveness and, and, and Leo can attest and all my, all my friends in my chat can attest to this. I'm super quick to forgive because I know not because, you know, I, some, some book told me to, or because I have some high ideal about it. It's because I simply understand that by hating somebody, by being unforgiving, I am only hurting myself. Yeah. And and yeah. that's what it boils down to. If you want to be a happy person, you can either stay and hate and you can be mad at, at what happened to you. And you can be the mad at the person that did it to you or you can do what's best for yourself and you can forgive. And 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 it really boils down to, you know, it's almost it's almost selfless selfishness, right? You're, you're showing love to another person and by and sh and and in that way showing love to yourself and I, I think it's pretty it's it's almost an oxymoron but but once you understand it it makes perfect well, it's, sense it's actually interesting that you brought that up because the the healing power of love in that book what I what I realized for myself and tried to share with others is you can if you forgive right don't add any other word to that don't forgive yourself don't forgive somebody else don't forgive a specific situation you just flat out forgive everything that ever happened to anyone period you just it, it takes that like that level of forgiveness and then that pulls all the negative like that we're in electromagnetic reality right so your body holds the electromagnetic charge that you um, perpetuate. So if it's fear, you're going to feel bad. If it's love, you're going to feel good. But the way to fill your body with love is this ultimate forgiveness of everything. Absolutely. And it just sucks the love in when the negative, you know, charge leaves your body, it sucks in the inverse, which mm -hmm. is a positive charge. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm looking at your chat right now that Leo's agreeing with this. Uh, I feel right saying love. I, I love all these Everybody. comments. By yeah, way. yeah. Yeah, but, and but yeah, if you add another word to love, then you're not loving, right? Unconditional love, love for a child, love for there aren't different kinds of love, and you don't yeah. need to add any other word, just love. Yeah, and it, and all of this that we're talking about, right? It's a practice, right? It's something that that you have to, to practice and understand, and and you know, for me to learn that, you know, it took a lot of. It took a lot of pain. And oh, yeah. I think that this is, and I think this is where people I think can learn a lot. And, and I didn't come to appreciate my pain until I, until, you know, now where I've, I've seen what it's done for me. Um, but, but, you know, when I was, when I was depressed, you know, I, I, I was a victim and, and I looked at myself as, you know, I, that I had been, been done did wrong and you know i blame my parents and, and all of these things and and uh responsibility was a big key part of it but but i think a lot of people they look at their pain as a negative thing and and now that you're here on i'm here on the opposite end right and i see what my pain has caused me to do and 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 how it's motivated me to become a better person and, and really all emotional pain in my mind is is a signal that you have something you've got to deal with and and i've studied a lot you know you talk about what happens when negativity in your in your body i've studied the science of that i i understand it to a degree and it's it's amazing how how being in a habit of negativity can affect your body your mind and and your health it rewires every, your brain yeah, every facet of your life, but that's why I think it's so important that that people educate themselves on these types of things because, you know, the the the, the fact of it is the knowledge is out there, but it's just not, it's just not a part of pop culture in America, right. and you know, in America, it's all about the almighty dollar. That's what it's all about, 
And so, you know, and, and it's slowly changing, right? And I know you've seen it. You talk about it in some of your books about, you know, people are starting to awaken. They're starting to realize that the way they live their life is is causing them to go crazy. And, and uh, you know, they're starting to, to slowly, this this knowledge is slowly starting to, to get more into the mainstream. But I, I highly encourage, man, people to, if, if anybody wants a book recommendation or anybody wants to talk to me on, and all that stuff. I mean, I'm absolutely open to it because it's the only thing I focus on more than my streaming is is my self growth and and the knowledge that I have. Well, something at, that at, I would like our... to say as an avid reader and also as a ten time author is sometimes less is more, right? Like the more that you search for the answer externally, the less likely it is that you're going to find it. Like all your truths your real truths are going to come from inside. They are, they are. And, and sometimes you need some help getting there. And I know I definitely did. And, you know, for me personally, I think the books really helped me because I wasn't, I didn't know how to listen to what was going on inside me. Hmm. And that was something I had to learn. Right. I mean, and, and we live in this age of distraction where, mm -hmm. where it is, I mean, you can literally, spend your entire day and never check within yourself for what's going on because there's so, I mean, we have, we have these beautiful phones, right. That stay in our pocket all day. And these are, I mean, these are literally just incredible, like they're incredible devices, but they're also incredible crutches in that you could constantly use them, right. To distract yourself all day. And, uh, it's just, you know, some people like me, I think I think if I hadn't had all those books, it would have taken me a lot longer to learn and understand the things that I had. And, and absolutely am thankful for all of the people that that uh, have been mentors to me in my journey to where I am now. All right. Now, this may help you, friend. I'll, I'll just interject this for you personally, but others maybe can learn from it. Um, I started studying Buddhism in 1997 when I was living in Japan on the island of Okinawa and I really really felt like a kinship with a lot of the uh, teachings of, of Buddhism and Buddha in general and he said something that I'd like to echo here which is there is no path to happiness happiness is the path mm -hmm. right it's not an end goal you're not going to yeah. arrive there you you every day you wake up and you actively pursue happiness mm -hmm. and joy in yeah. your body and mind. Yep. I, I like to put it this way. This is kind of how, how I came to understand it. And it's, you were born happy and then you learned how to be unhappy and getting exactly. back to, to happiness essentially is just a process of unlearning all the stuff that made you unhappy. Well, so so it's, something else I would like to interject for you, Violent, is this. For 20 years, literally for 20 years, I worked on meditation and I would go out into, I like to be in nature. It's a, there's a healing frequency there. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would think, uh, you know, I'd get in the right sitting position and put my hands in the right mudras and all this chant, the right yeah. mantras. And what I finally realized was as soon as I, like I saw a yellow bird and I'd be like, oh, that's a, that's a pretty yellow bird. Or I would see a, a red flower and it would have a particular smell. Like, oh, that's a pretty red flower. Well, the it's a very specific thing that I stopped doing that made all the difference. And that is as soon as you just sign a descriptive narrative to the other thing, you were then removing yourself from the oneness of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I stopped assigning descriptive narratives and started becoming a passive observer. Mm -hmm. and unfeeling the energy inherent in my body and in this play in this space and it's what like rocket ship me into the current reality that i now right in. and it's such a simple thing right it's so simple that yeah. is what i love about the truth and and the truth of of, of the world is is you know and that's that's what the craziest thing every time i learn something about you know how to be happy how to how to become a happier person how to how to and and I stop being become, but how to how to become who I've always been, which right. is a naturally happy human being, is it's all so simple, right? I mean, we we complicate it for ourselves, yeah. and and it's not our fault, and and you know it, it's it's because 
again, you know, and I go back to, and I, and I wish, you know, our, our culture is just not, it's not ingrained knowledge in our culture of, of what it but takes. That's intentional. To a good life. Yeah. That's intentional. You're the, the, the reason I like most of my viewers know this, but I quit watching TV in 2011 period. I don't watch TV. I watch, I like watching movies. Sometimes I like watching podcasts, YouTube videos and stuff, but the, the, the television, the patent for television, it's actually a mind control device. And it's, I, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. It's and crazy. it's, you know, the thing is guys, like, again, I'm going to say it, the truths, your truths are already inside of you. There, there is a, a knowledge available in this reality. It's the, the oneness and people like Nikola Tesla even talked about it. Uh, like they're not particularly smarter than any other person. They just got quiet and were able to connect to this universal energy that's present for everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're divine beings, the soul that's within, we're, we're divine beings having a we human are. existence. We are divine souls. And, and once you make that shift, man, it's, it's super powerful, man. And I, and, and, and I, I love it, dude. I well, love the, it. what allows us to tune into that frequency is the pineal gland, right? And so you actually have to eat well and get sun and drink well, water and, you know, like you actually have to affect yeah. your physical form to be able to tune into that frequency. Absolutely. A healthy body, healthy mind, man. It's all interconnected. Absolutely. And, and, and it's, it's not, I mean, right. I mean, I've seen plenty of, uh, plenty of, uh, you know, gurus who don't work out a whole lot and you know they i'm sure they like their chicken pot pie and all that so it's not a not an absolute requirement but but yeah i agree man it's and and i am i think that in my life i think that's that's uh and everybody is wondering why i'm a hit why i call myself a hippie this is why because because <laughs> this is the kind of stuff i'm into but but in my mind it's a it's a piece of the equation and I kind of like to look at it as like a, um, a triangle, right? Healthy mind, healthy body, healthy spirit. And, and if any of those areas are weak and in my early life, I was always, I was, I've always been fit and I've always been into fitness and health is, has always been a big part of my life. So that, that leg has always been stable. And, uh, I thought that was the key to happen. And that was all part of my journey is, is learning that, you know, you can, you can have the nice bod and have the six pack abs and, and all of that. And, and if, but if you're not taking care of your mind, if you're not auditing your thoughts, auditing your beliefs, and if you're not spending time with God, and like you said, you know, staying as that conscious observer and getting out of your mind and spending some time in the silence and, and, and all of that, then you are, you're not completing that triangle and, and you're not going to be able to, to live a completely fulfilling life because that aspect of your life is out of balance. Yeah, exactly. And, and I see in chat, you know, they're talking about how, you know, the phones and everything are designed to release the same positive chemicals in your brain that yeah. like friendship and love and relationships used to, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's why these this new generation of, of children don't know how to interact on a, any personal yeah. level or create a real emotional response with another human being. Yeah, man. And it's it's really sad and it, it hurts me to watch. And, and you know, there's and, and it's not just the, the kids faults. I mean, it's a lot of times it's the parents faults because I and I've seen this. I've seen this a lot and I've noticed it parents. And, and this actually happened to me and it's it's something I've learned through a lot but um, but parents these days are using technology as stand-in babysitters mm -hmm. and you know instead of actually parenting their kids they're just putting an iPad in their hands and they're saying okay sh be quiet now and and you're good to go and and that's a lot of the way that they they parent their kids and I I hate 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 to see it because you know, those devices, like they're saying in the chat, are so addictive. And, you know, we could talk all day about addiction. I, 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 I focus a lot on addiction because I have a lot of addictions that I'm working on currently in my life. But 
But those things are so addictive. And as a child, you are forming just such deep neural pathways in your brain around those types of things. And, and it's, it's, it works, right? I mean, and I get it. I get it from a parent's perspective, right? Like I, I've never been a parent, but I can imagine how hard it is to have a screaming child who is, won't stop screaming, won't stop crying. You can't figure out they want their iPad. They want this. They want that. But, you know, I think it's going to come to light eventually the error of our ways and that we we can't rely on that as a crutch. We've got to find better ways to parent and, and raise our kids because if we don't, they're going to grow up exactly like you said, socially and inept. They're going to be addicted to technology. They're not going to be able to interact and, and take care of themselves in the real world because they've been on a device that can provide them instant pleasure. They have a device in their pocket that can provide them instant pleasure. And and life inherently is tough. And, and the skill that this world needs is to learn how to deal with the low points in life. And uh, well, but so, so you hit on this earlier, and I want to echo it, which is people have this misconception that they can avoid pain and they can avoid trouble in their life. That's not the case. Also, those low points, those difficult times are just as important, if not more important in the happy times, because that's what's going to push you to grow and to change. Absolutely. And it's that very mindset, Joe, that that people need, right? Because that's not a whole lot of people think that way about their pain. They, 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 and like I said earlier, you know, I saw myself as a victim with pain mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I, 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 it, a lot of, of my spiritual growth has been just changing the way I look at the bad things that happen in my life. And, uh, and you're absolutely right, man. I mean, you're, you're a hundred percent right. You, you have to cultivate that positive mindset around the bad things that happen to you because they're unavoidable. And if you cultivate a positive mindset around them, they can become positive things, even though yeah. from a cultural perspective, they are negative. Right. Right. And, and that's, that's such a, that's such a key thing. And, and, you can turn your 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 curses into blessings, and that's really what becoming developing true happiness is all about: is turning your your shortcomings into to uh, to blessings. And I think I think t I'm actually going to quote Game of Thrones here because yeah, Tyrion right. Tyrion Lannister said this in the in the book, and he said it in the show too. And he said, um, "Never forget your weaknesses." because the world will not make your weaknesses your strength armor yourself in them and they can never be used to hurt you and i thought that was so powerful and i think that just speaks measures about what we're talking about is is learning to take the bad shit that's happened to you and turn it into a strength and use it to make you a better person a stronger human being yeah. and that is that is a major major key well, I mean, I wouldn't be the person I am today without all of the things that I've been through. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. And you probably appreciate those things because of it, right? You maybe you didn't a long time ago and 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 right if 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 I were to in your shoes and I couldn't imagine what you went through, Joe, and I've I've heard a lot about I've read a little bit about what happened to you and I know you've been through a lot more than than most, but if you didn't find a way, right? I mean, you you could, like you said, be mired in addiction, and and you said you were three hundred pounds, and mm -hmm. that's the kind of road that 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 path leads you down, is as exactly. a road of, of more unhappiness. And and now, right? If we were to look at all the things that happened to you in a positive light, right? You have a podium to stand on now because you have experience. And coming out of that, right? You you've gained the wisdom of coming out of that, not only which is a positive thing. You now have a a, a testimony too, right? Mm -hmm. From which to, to speak from and and to 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 have a cathartic speech and and help people change. And and I think that's like all the 
all the positive things that can come from the darkness that that is in your life. And I know that's for me personally, that's how I look at the bad things that have happened to me. Well, something that really helped me like as an autistic person, we don't have emotional thoughts. We still have the physiological effects on our body from the emotions, but not necessarily the understanding in the mind. So I had to learn how to feel like when I would feel sad in my body or feel angry or feel depressed, I had to learn what the different physiological symptoms were in my body so I could understand what emotion I was having. And yeah. it was very helpful for me as an autistic person to understand emotions. But what was more important, I believe, then when I was, say, in nature, I could feel like, oh, wait, this feels good. This feels like happy. Like when mm -hmm. I'm happy, it feels like this. So when I want to be happy, I go outside. I listen to the wind blow through the trees. I listen to the birds chirping, right? I feel the sun mm -hmm. on my face. So what you, you, you learn to pay attention to the vibrations around you. And when you go into a place or you're around a certain person and they make you feel like you feel when you're sad, you know, that's yeah. not somebody to spend time around or Absolutely, with like dude. with you. When I came into your chat and the way you interacted with me and with everyone, I was like, oh, wait, this is a happy vibration. I'm going right. to do more of this. Exactly. And I, dude, and I understand that more, more than any, anybody. And, you know, going back to streaming, that's part of the work that I do outside of the stream is for the stream, right? Like I meditate so that I can be in a good mood so that when I turn on that stream button and I get into that positive mindset that people can feel it. And, you know, we talked about it earlier, how, how important I think that is, right? Everybody comes into the stream and they feel an emotion. Mm -hmm. And we talked about being genuine and we talked about all of that. That to me is so key. And that, that, and, you know, just going full circle here, that is, that is why I feel like part of the reason I'm so, I've had success as a streamer is because I've worked on that aspect of myself and I've, I've cultivated those positive emotions. I've I've spent the time developing my awareness practice and I've I've come to 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 like you're saying learn to sense when when something is going good and when something is not going good. I've I've become okay with the negative emotions. You know, I'm mm -hmm. I'm okay with expressing those. I'm okay I've I've overcome fear of being judged, which is a big fear that every streamer struggles with, right? And all those things you put them together, they create a positive environment in which people can come and hang out and they feel good and they have fun and and it creates that type of environment. And that's the environment I've always wanted to create. And that's why I do what I do outside of here. Not only for my own happiness, but so that I can also with my stream now, which is probably the second most important thing to me in my life, you know, create a positive stream environment. That that aspect of what you're talking about is is a huge key. And I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't hadn't wrapped my head around those things and gone on the meditation retreats. The 10 days I went on a 10 day silent retreat and that was mm. it was like I had surgery. You know, it was like I had emotional surgery on myself. I mean, there was just so much stuff inside me that I didn't know I had. And yeah, man. I mean, I, I attribute it, most, if not all, my success to to what I've done and in, in the spiritual realm. And and you're absolutely right. If 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 I hadn't have done that, they want they want to see nipple tassels. I think is what they do. Oh to see. no, I'm I'm watching chat. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to ignore it. But it, but an unattended hashtag an, nip slip. An, an, an unattended uh, side effect for you though, uh, hippie, is this. You know, you work so hard to put out this positive production value, right, and high quality content. But then you echoed it before, which was, yeah, but when the chat, when it's all these people that I know and love, then you, it is a return back to you and it actually improves your well being as well. Absolutely, 100%. I mean, I am a better person now than I was a year ago when I started streaming, 100%. I mean, there is no question in my mind that, and, and, and it goes back to, like I said, right? I mean, life, life in general is an instrument, a, an instrument of growth. 
And once you start to look at and, and streaming right is an aspect of my life and streaming has 100% been a, a catalyst for growth for me. And, and, and so much so that yes, I, I mean, I do, I get tons of positive benefit from, from create having all these lovely relationships that I've, that I've cultivated from having this positive community. Yep. from 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 cultivating love and and i mean here we are and, and i absolutely love every single person in the chat right now because they're just absolutely blowing me up with love and you right. know sometimes i feel like i don't deserve it too but that i think that's perfectly human and natural to feel that way but it's not i know that it's not true and and yeah, every just single that echo from your past trying to get back in you just can't exactly and and we all feel that way and and i want to say you know I want to say that to myself, but I also want to say it to everybody in the chat right now that you absolutely deserve love. You are loved by me. Yep. And, and I just appreciate every single one of y'all for being here and supporting Joe. And I hope y'all will give Joe a follow. Well, dude, I tell you. And, get, and support. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are we supposed to say that? Yeah. If you're having a good time, hit the follow button. I forget, yeah. I forget to even say that, right? Because it doesn't <laughs> matter right. to me. There for you. Well, it's not important to me. They're here. They're loving on us. What else could we possibly ask for? <laughs> Right. And just so, know, it's great. Just so it's you guys great. know, um, all of these uh, fireside chats that I'm doing with the Good Vibe Tribe this week, we had Bearded Leo on yesterday, today, Violent Hippie. We've got Filthy Saint coming up just after uh, this interview with Violent Hippie. But all of the, <laughs> who's Joe? I'm here for the nipple tassels. Uh, <laughs> but just so you guys know, all of the Lino. <sighs> Uh, all the Lino that was thank donated you, you. yesterday during Bearded Leo's podcast, all the Lino that's being donated today during Violent Hippies podcast, all the Lino that's donated with Filthy Saint all week. I'm saving that Lino. And on Saturday, on the 20th, uh, Bearded Leo is doing a charity stream. A lot of us are. We're raising money for a young man na named Noah. Um, he was born without ears. He has a lot of medical complications. And we're raising money to help pay for his next surgery. And so uh, there's a bounty on the beard, bearded Leo. We're going to, he's going to be the unbearded Leo. Uh, he oh, said, yeah. For the first time in over a decade. So just so you guys know, all any Leno that you donate uh, today or in any of the, the fireside chats we do this week on Saturday, it's all being donated. 100% is being donated to. To come in now, I wasn't. I <laughs> I'm not asking for donations, guys. And then uh, the guinea comes in. I appreciate Woo! that you. I appreciate that you are, but I just wanted you to know that I don't keep this Lino. I I have never cashed out any Lino. Um, I spend my own money to lock. I have ninety thousand Lino locked in. I spent my own money for that. All the money, all the Lino that's donated to me, I always use to subscribe to other content creators and donate. Uh, to them and encourage new streamers by donating to them and and what's great the reason I brought up crypto gamer early on in the uh, in the chat guys is because I went to him and donated some Lino a couple days in a row and realized that was the only Lino he had ever had donated to him and when I went back and talked to him about it to to give him more Lino and to encourage him more he was like, dude, I really appreciate you giving me that Lino. I was able to go around and support other streamers and donate to them. And I was like, oh, man, my heart just swelled. I was mm. like, they they start out so young, but they grow so fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Seriously, just yes. spread that love, man. Yes, that is, dude. And that's what it's all about, man. And, and you know, we don't just we don't just give for any reason. We give because it feels good, right? And, and I'll give leo a message right now that beard's coming off i've been saving up leno for that day well hold on he just i somebody just brought up a, a delicious delicious point oh god put a bounty yeah. on that hair we i've thought about it chad i've thought about it and i and i don't know i don't know i i am so attached to well, my it's hair it's different actually your hair is attached to you here, but i know what you mean here's the question chad will y'all still love me without my hair I, not as me? not as much <laughs> not as much no no i'm kidding <laughs> no actually no. let me tell you something about your hair and this is important guys if you don't know this um the reason look i cut my hair off and there's a reason why 
the the Native American trackers when when the military first uh, was in the United States and was working with the Native American trackers and then ultimately against them, you know, unfortunately, but they they had really long hair. The Indians did and the Native Americans, they're not Indians or Native Americans. And the trackers would actually say, we can't cut our hair. We won't. It, it actually is an extension of our nervous system and it allows us to perceive the energy around us. And they actually did test with them and they would have people sneak up on them and while they were sleeping when they had long hair every single time they knew and they woke up. Then they wow. made them cut their hair to conform to the military and every single time they failed interesting so it's huh. you're it's literally like for me being an autistic individual i have extremely heightened senses anyway and i get very easily overwhelmed and i've noticed if i let my hair grow out it's 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 i say worse it's but it's more so you mm -hmm. know you will actually affect your ability to perceive the electromagnetic anomalies around you by cutting your hair interesting i've never heard that before yeah, so I wouldn't, I'm teasing you about cutting your hair, but honestly, I don't think I would if I were you. Because... I'd real say, no, come cut it in real life. <laughs> That's funny. I'm sure he would. I'm sure he would. And guys, we're talking about love. We're talking about life, right? And Violent Hippie obviously is espouses that in his daily life and in his chat. And I, I want to say, like, I've reached out to other uh, streamers offline in real ways to try to support them. And I'm not going to mention his name, but there's a streamer driving to my house right now because he needs love and he needs time away from his reality. And he's going to come spend a week with me on the lake. Wow. So dude, that is incredible. Yeah, man. Like I, I'm going to get, I'll try not to get emotional, but like, like I'm serious, man, this, what you guys do on your streams echoes in, in ways that you can't even imagine. Well, Joe, you're a positive influence on this community, man. And, and, you know, you said a lot of nice things about me, but but I just want to say about you, man, you are absolutely a part of the Good Vibe Pride. It's it's a re part of the reason we invited, we, we knew you'd fit in perfect because we know that, that that's what you embody. And, and from the moment we've met, you've been nothing but 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 truly nice. And 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 and, and despite everything you've been through, man. And, and I think it's just absolutely awesome. And and you are a positive light in this community. And, and I think, you know, not only, and, and what's crazy and, and about what we're just hearing this is, is, you know, you're, you're so nice that you are, you're opening your home to someone who, who is going through a rough time. Now, I mean, I've done some nice things, but that is next level, like caring. And, and so I absolutely commend you for that. And that is, it truly touches my heart, man, that you would care enough to open your house to somebody. Well, and, it's and, real, and man. That. Like this, this tattoo that I have on my forearm, there's a semicolon and it says IGY6, right? The semicolon in writing denotes a dramatic pause, right? Stop mm -hmm. what you're doing and pay attention to the next bit. And IGY6 is a military phrase that we use, which is I've got your six, I've got your back. I will mm -hmm. help you. I will look out for you. I will care for you. And you know, this is another, he's a military veteran and he's going through some struggles and, um, you know, and I just, I knew that. And I, so I, I offered it to him a couple of weeks back and, uh, he called me a few days ago and I could tell he was struggling. We talk on discord and we talk offline like you and, and a lot of the good vibe tribe do. And, uh, yeah. I could tell he was really, you know, he was in a tough place. And I said, dude, listen, I've got an empty room. My, it's for my children when they're here in the summers, right? They're getting older, but they still come visit. I said, but it's empty. And this is a beautiful, peaceful place that I live. I live in Hot Springs National Park. I live on a lake, right? If you need quiet, yeah, this is a great place to do it. And so uh, we may actually do some co-streams together uh, this week since he's going to be here. Uh, it's up to him if he wants to. But, but yeah, like the reason I start, I never streamed before D live. I didn't, I never even considered streaming. Uh, uh -huh. But when I got here to D live and I found people like you and bearded Leo and all these, I mean, I, there's a list, right. Of people. But when I found that kind of love and, and energy that was inherent in the D live community, I was like, wait, I, I can do that. I know how to do that. And, and yes. so I started streaming 100% 
to love on people and to support people and encourage people around the planet. Yes. And, and that's what I was going to say is that's why we do what we do. And, and you have in your own way, right, created a space where you can have a positive impact. Yep. And 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 that is exactly what what myself and Leo and 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 Tryhard and and Irish Miss Con, all of these people right that they, they want to have a positive impact on the world and and I just think it's I think it's absolutely awesome what we're all doing we're all working together to create a better world D Live in itself kind of represents that and so i think we're here in this perfect place mm -hmm. and it's kind of all just this divine this divine thing that has brought us all together here and and uh i don't know man it's just kind of kind of humbling like to see see what has come of it and and i i also just want to say you know going back to this is is uh, and make a point is you wouldn't be able to do what you do help other people if you hadn't helped yourself first. Oh, absolutely. And, and Actually, that's hold on, let me interject because I lose my thought. And I want to say, I want to make that point, which is I spent a decade after I got medically retired from the military doing community outreach, uh, working with children, going to the high schools, supporting them, going to elderly care centers, doing end of life care, working with the homeless, working with drug addicts, working with suicidal people, on and on and on and what i realized well number one it's extremely physically and mentally draining mm -hmm. it's also very rewarding but the re what i realized i was doing was trying to take the the focus off of myself by distracting mm -hmm. myself well i'll help somebody else i'll feel good for a minute then i go back to feeling bad well i'll go help somebody else and it wasn't mm -hmm. until i did that for myself that I then have now an unlimited amount of love available. Because, and in that, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say because my body like generates that now, yeah. right? Like, yeah, you're not going to be crazy? less by lighting another candle with it, yours. Exactly, but isn't that crazy though? And this is something I want to address, right? Because even something that is uh, outwardly po a positive as helping some helping another human being can become a negative negativity in your life yeah and and that's something that i really want to self-deprecation it is and and it can become a negative thing and it can almost be a negative addiction and, and i think there's a lot of, of people in society that feel unloved because their particular brand of addiction you know whether it be drugs or or alcohol or whatever right is frowned upon by society, right? It's kind of this cultural, oh, that stuff is bad. So if you're addicted to that, you're a bad person. But addiction has a million faces and it can even come in the form of helping others. Mm -hmm. And and it can be a source of negativity in your life. And, and what I learned and what I want everybody to take away from here is that you've got the reason why you do something is everything. The reason why you do something is everything. Yep. And if you can get to the center of why you do something, and if you have a truly genuine reason for why you help people, what you do, and oh, Chicky Poo is blowing up the chat, by the yeah, way. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, all of that, all those donations but, are yes. going to go to Noah on Saturday to help get that little boy a surgery. But but what, I, what I'm saying is, is, is help yourself first learn 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 these things that we've talked about today learn learn you know and it's like the the airplane analogy right you put your and when when the the air masks come down right you put yours on your face first and then you help others and that's what's key and i i want to express here and and make sure people understand is i wouldn't be able to do what i do today help people create a positive community from a truly positive place if I had not stopped and put energy into myself first. And that is so key, guys. So, so key to what you're doing. And if you want to be successful as a streamer, you don't you don't have to. I mean, some people have may have what it takes, right? There's there's exceptions everywhere, but my key to success is absolutely one hundred percent due to the fact that I helped myself first and I got to a place where I could help others. 
And now because I'm here, I can do that. So well, you and I even talked about that before the this interview started, which was I knew that you and I were going to be able to get into this this type of talk. And so I spent an hour outside in the sunshine absorbing that energy and feeling gratitude for my life and my present situation in order to charge myself up to to help be in the right mindset for this. Yeah, man. For sure, dude. And it, hel it helps. And look, here we are. We're having a badass conversation. We're talking about all kinds of cool stuff. I feel like I'm sitting in your lap stroking your hair, man. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like Dr. Evil style. Just like, hmm. <laughs> That's funny, man. All right, guys. So you've been incredibly patient. The, <laughs> the, the viewing audience, uh, or at least some of you, not so much the worst viewer that we have, but... Uh, no, no, if you guys, now's the time. I know you've been waiting to roast Mr. Hippie. You've been waiting to ask legitimate questions. No matter who you are in the audience, Phil, this is the time, guys. If you've got questions that you've always wanted Travis to answer, uh, Violent Hippie, uh, rather, please, by all means, go ahead and start spamming your questions in the chat. We will answer them uh, as much as we can. Yes. All right. But those aren't questions. Love you too, Iris. Love you too. You guys Love are excited, too, but now we're waiting. Now we need questions. What's up, Oh Chicky Poo? I saw some questions earlier, so, so I'm sure there's some stuff. Can I see your tramp stamp? Mm, maybe I, on Friday customs after 18 shots. I have one too. It says <laughs> Pope Mahone. <laughs> <laughs> She's just being a joke. But uh, but um, hippie, can I send you flowers? Uh, if you want to send me flowers, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, I am not much of a green thumb, so I, I can't guarantee that they'll live very oh, long. Look, but... look who's lurking in the chat. <laughs> Chaotic's in here. He says, why are you so pretty? What's up, Chaotic? He is a beautiful man. He is. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's the eye, and I'll tell you what it is. It's I blame my eyes. mama. Dude, it's your eyes. You've got... You clearly have a beautiful soul and you can see it in your eyes. You got a great oh, smile, man. right? You've got a good look. You've got a unique thing going, but it's your eyes. Thank you, dude. I'm, I'm going to blush over here because I don't, I don't like talking about how pretty I am. But, but yeah, uh, yeah, I, I blame my mama for all that. I might not be a good gamer, but my favorite streamer <laughs> is Violet Hippie. <laughs> 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 oh gosh let's see best of the worst is hippie tips for growing your hair dude what step number shampoo? one don't cut it yeah that's it it's that easy <laughs> it's that simple. that's it dude you're gonna go through some awkward stages it's not gonna be it's not gonna be pretty yes you know what i, I went through some ugliness to get to this prettiness chat i'm not gonna yes. lie yes I'm there's going definitely through some that. awkward stages and if you go deep enough in my Facebook, you could probably find it. I, I probably shouldn't have said that. Now everyone's going to go find my Facebook. But How much of a dono train would we need to get you to shave your head, hippie? Oh, my gosh. The um, well, I know Leo's going for, for $5,000. 500000 Leno is what we're trying which is, to raise yeah, on Saturday. Which is, is $6,000. So for me to cut my hair, I'd say we'd have to at least double that. We'd have to, we'd, we'd have, have to raise, have at to least raise a million. I would, I would say, I would say I would put the mark at 15,000, whatever 15,000 is in Lino. If we could hit 15,000 and I, it was a charity I really cared about. We, I would cut it off. I'd cut it off for you guys. I've been needed. Y'all you know, know how much of a bitch this hair is. <laughs> All my ladies in the chat. I know y'all know how much of a bitch this long stuff hair is. is a struggle for sure. Uh, guys, I'm lazy. I don't like grooming my. I'm a dude, but guys, that's that's why we buzz our hair stuff because we don't like doing that stuff. But but I just cut mine off last night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm all for getting back to a simpler hairdo if uh, if we can raise $15,000 for a badass charity. Absolutely would be down to do that. Well, I mean, we do have a charity stream on Saturday. So not to not to put a timestamp on it, but... Well, I'm gonna, I don't want to steal any... Take anything away from Bearded. That is... That I'm, would, gonna, no, I'm that saving up Lino. Away. I'm saving up Lino to give specifically to Leo's cause. And uh, I want, I really want to participate as a viewer and donate and, and get the hype going and, Best and support him and his cause. And then maybe, maybe after that, 
<laughs> best of the worst. Best of the worst. Oh, oh he's, no. That's because he's oh. he's a, he's a bald man. But hey, best of the worst. Here's a here's the inverse. How much would it take for you to shave your beard? And keep, ah. it, keep in mind, because because here's the real deal. Okay, it took me over a year to get to a point where I could 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 ban my hair. It's yeah. going to take Leo maybe a month or two to grow his beard back. So Right, exactly. No, that's a much yeah. larger commitment. Yeah. So, so just keep that on. Unreal says favorite band, my favorite band. Here, we'll we'll do two questions. We're going to do we're going to do my favorite like band when I was a kid growing up and then we'll do my favorite now. My favorite band back in the day. Well, I had several, but I used to absolutely love Avenged Sevenfold. Um, and then I used to, I, I was obsessed with, with Guns N' Roses for a long time when I was uh, a kid and Jimi Hendrix, yes, used to yes. absolutely love those bands. Nowadays I listen to more like rap and chill hop music hmm. um, cause I play guitar, but my favorite band these days or my favorite artist, I should say, and there's really not a whole lot of bands, but like, I love Khalid is one of my favorites. Drake, of course, I, I love Drake. Um, but, but, uh, I'm, I'm kind of more into, to rap. Well, I see a now, guitar on the wall behind you. Is that something? I do. This are, is a, are you this musically inclined, sir? Uh, I am. I am. I've played guitar since I was 13. I'm not as good as I used to be. I, I, am, uh, I don't practice that much anymore. That's how uh, life works, buddy. I'm not as good but, as I once was. I'm not as good as I was. <laughs> you never but not be. as good as I ever <laughs> There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go, baby. That's a good one. But yes, uh, guitars was a uh, guitar was one of my very first like passions. And I used the energy that I put into the stream now, I used to put into You know, we could talk about like what I used to do as a kid. But I used to spend like I mean, I would s do exactly what I'm doing. I would sit sit at the computer for tens of hours. I mean, I'd sit there for 15 hours and do music or 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 all that. I really uh, like on. Bearded Leo's question. He says, hey, yeah, do, yeah. do you feel streamer fatigue is a thing? And if so, what's the best practice to stay healthy while streaming? Yes, I do think streamer fatigue is a, is a thing. And I think uh, what it comes from is not having fun on your stream. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think a lot of that comes from, well, okay. I, I, that's, that's one thing. Um, how, how would I, how do I put this right? There's a lot of ways you can become fatigued as a streamer. And I want to respect, cause I know a lot of people have gone through it. Like a ninjas talked about it. Um, the thing with streaming and, and here's, here's what I'm going to say about streaming is streamers can't have a bad day, right? If I turn on this this stream button, I'm gonna give you my best. Author, I'm not gonna show up here. I'm not gonna show up here half dressed and and in a bad mood. And and even if I am in a bad mood, right, I'm gonna put my best foot forward no matter what. And I think for a lot of streamers that can get difficult, especially when life is consistently consistently tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, that again. Again, I think it goes back right to having it such a good, a good health, health, self health care routine. Yes. And, 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 you know, Joe talked about it earlier. Uh, meditation, you know, I talked about it. I meditate every single day, even if it's for five minutes, 10 minutes. I meditate every single day well the best thing i've ever heard about meditation is the people that don't have time to do it need it the most mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yeah yeah <laughs> and it's true man and 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 you know what there's a lot of of fluff and and kind of airy fairy around meditation that kind of aggravates me because you know it, it it's people see it as like sitting cross-legged and and that's the image that pops in people's head right is like this formal like level of meditation where you're sitting cross-legged and you're humming and you're doing all this right. this crap but meditation can be as simple as sitting on your front porch and just chilling and sipping coffee that's that's how i start my day i i i i sip coffee with awareness that's basically what i do get playing guitar right here on my wall mindfulness it, it can be a, a practice of mindfulness it mm -hmm. absolutely can all these 
you know, all this, this airy fairy weirdness around meditation, meditation is something you probably already do in a way you just don't know it. Mindfulness. And, it's being present in the moment and being aware of what you're doing in that moment. Exactly. And it's, it's cultivating positive emotion and, and finding those things and understanding that that's what you're doing. Like guitar, right. Can be a, a healing thing for me playing that. And it's part well, of why I enjoy it. Definitely healing. And yeah. And just like, just like finding time for yourself, man. And, and, and another thing I'll say, right. Is if you're feeling burnt out as a streamer and, and you're experiencing streamer fatigue, you know, don't, don't, continue to force it because you're just if you drive into the wall and you keep pressing on the gas you're just gonna go deeper and deeper into the wall it's basic common sense you well, know something, I, I, dude something you said earlier don't mean to interrupt but it's i, oh, I think the, it's a fine point which is if you're not doing something that you enjoy on stream you can't keep it up right you have to yes. be unique you have to be yourself like if i tried to play and i've even said this with bearded leo and he was awesome about it don't worry about it joe don't worry about it i have a hard time watching battle royales they make me dizzy they get me upset i i and i can't play them either so if i tried to come on to streaming and become a, a professional like first person shooter I would be miserable. I would be upset every day. I would be bummed out. I wouldn't be this happy, cheery guy that I am. So do, absolutely, do you, period. Yeah, exactly. That is so true, man. That is so true. And that's another key. And we talked about it earlier in the podcast too, you know, and that's why I say, you know, if you're trying to be someone you're not, you're going to constantly have to expend energy. Yep. Now, to, see, they keep people are keep referring to some giveaway you're doing next weekend. What do you want to talk about that? So we did a big giveaway. Uh, it was it was last weekend. Myself, Ochiki, Tapu, Leo, and Enforcer teamed up to do a big giveaway, and we're driving in person to do a uh, to give that away. The nice. person happens to be here, and his name's Jay Rec a lot. He was super pumped, and we're gonna we're gonna go drive down and and and. And give that away to him. Oh, it's man, that's be, awesome. What state does exciting. he live in? He is in Texas. He's in Texas. Okay. So. Well, because I'm well, in Arkansas, that's not that far. Not at all, man. I mean, we're we're. I'm talking. We're, I'm gonna have to drive maybe an hour to give it away to him. Uh, so it's it's gonna be really nice. But are you are you are you hinting that you want to come down here? And I mean, i I'm all about a road trip. And like I said, there's another streamer is gonna be here at my house. Uh, so I don't know. He might be down for a road trip. Well, heck, man, come on down, dude. I mean, I, mean, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a big, uh, I don't have a big place to stay. And Ochiki's already gonna stay at my place. So, if uh, if we get too many people come down, we're gonna run out of room. We're gonna have to start. Hey, uh, listen, hippie. Sleeping on listen, floors and listen, stuff. Listen, hippie. <laughs> the more the merrier, man. I don't know what you heard about free Absolutely. love, but it's free and it's open to all. Y'all pack up your bags and come on, let's go. <laughs> J J Leo says, "Damn it, you cannot meet hippie before I do." Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh, so man, much it, love. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be really cool. I can't wait to give it away to the man. He's he's been going through. You know, he's been going through some stuff and and uh, yeah, Unreal. Unreal should definitely. Why have we not invited Unreal, guys? Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and blame this on the blonde hair, guys. I'm sorry. No, if 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 whoever the hell wants to come. All right, we're having a party at my place this weekend. It sounds like everybody get your ass in your cars and get on down here. Let's go. Bring a bottle of uh, <laughs> Fireball and bring your ass on, right? Yep, yep. I already got some, so I yeah. know that's why. Was... We we just need our <laughs> personal bottle. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, man. So Absolutely. much love, man. So much love. I appreciate it all, of, man. Such man, such a good interview we've had today. Dude, it has been an absolute blessing, man. You know, this is my first interview ever, so I, I really didn't know what to expect. But I got to say, now that we're we're kind of through it, I, I, I it's been an absolutely positive experience, man. And I really, really appreciate you having me on the show, dude. Oh, absolutely, dude. And I just so you know, I've done I've done a lot of like interviews with radios and television stations, newspapers, right? Public appearances. They don't all go this well. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, they don't all go this well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I am in Houston. That's right. So, yep. Yeah, but yeah, man, absolutely a pleasure. And and uh, man, you know, 
I, I think uh, I think you set the bar pretty high. You know, this being my first interview, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna. Ex I'm. I think I'm gonna expect pretty good things from from the rest of my interviews that I that I have going forward. Hopefully, there are some more interviews. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you guys, I just saw in chat. If you want to talk about this road trip, uh, the can you guys link the Discord again? The Good Vibe Tribe has a Discord, and it's open to anybody who wants to love on people, who wants to to uh, support people in a real way. So love y'all too, guys. Yeah, love every one of you. So guys, just so you know, we've got another fireside chat coming up immediately after this one, about a 10 minute recess. Um, we're going to have Filthy Saint. Filthy Saint, part of the Good Vibe Ooh, Tribe. Such a good Saint. dude. I'm laughing at Hit Your Shots comment, but yeah, Filthy Saint coming in here. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, Chicky Poo, send me, uh, if anybody in chat, I mean, obviously we, this is one of the best chats we've ever had. <laughs> Uh, because of the Good Vibe Tribe, because of that team. So anybody that can hear the sound of my voice right now, you can go to Discord and send me a direct message at Author Joe Holt and say, hey, I want to be on your fireside chats and you can be. Period. Now, I've reached out to a good number. I've got I've got a list. We've got Tony Rumble, Spontaneous J, Tryhard CC, Rook. I'm serious. There's already a list of people that we're trying to get on. But uh, just so you know, directly after this one, we'll give us give us 10 minutes to, cause we got to set up the technical side of it. And honestly, I need to get up and stretch my bones a minute. But uh, Filthy Saint will be on immediately following this podcast. Bama with the subscription, dude. Love you, buddy. Love you guys. Ooh, there it is. Yes, thank you all. I just I'll say before we we draw this to it, thank you guys for coming out so much and supporting the the interview. And if you haven't, follow this man, show him some love for creating this this positive environment, being a part of the Good Vibe Tribe, helping the Good Vibe Tribe spread our message and 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 have a positive impact. So absolute shout out to Arthur for for all that you've done for us, man, today. I really appreciate it. Well, and like you said, it's not it, it in some ways it's selfish because I draw so much love from this just like you guys do that I I would be wrong if I didn't say that it also I also do it for my own well being. So well you're you're a part of the community now and, and that's what we're about, right? Growing together. So it's absolutely I'm 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 here to help you grow. I'm here to help our community grow. And that's what it's all about. You didn't you didn't miss it, Bama. I just put a link in chat, guys. If you've missed any of our fireside chats, I always upload them to my YouTube channel, Author Joe Holt. There's a playlist just for these live podcasts. So you can you can eat like even, you know, hippie, you might even want to go back and watch this again and I'll send you a link in Discord to your specific uh, show. But it's been that's it's cool. been one of the best. So um, something that uh, one of my moderators brought up, it seems a little bit abrupt when I just end the uh, podcast. So um, Hippie, if you don't mind hanging out just for a minute uh, on Discord, I'm going to go ahead and go to a full screen mode and just uh, thank everybody for their participation and uh, good. tell them, you know, wrap it up. So I'll, I'll be right back, my friend. Sounds good. All right, guys, this is something we're trying new with the end of the uh, fireside chat. So I'd like to go full screen. And I just want to say what we're doing here, these live podcasts, they're called fireside chats. And we're trying to get to know these guys in a real way, right? We're trying to introduce you to um, the streamers on a personal level. This today has been Travis, Violent Hippie. It's an incredible soul. He's incredibly supportive and loving of his community. And, and that's really what we're trying to do here on DLive is spread that love around, guys. So just just again to reiterate, thank you, Violet Hippie, dude, for all those donations. Everything that's donated today, everything that's donated in the next interview, guys, with Filthy Saint, stay tuned. Uh, definitely don't go anywhere. We've got another incredible um, interview coming up immediately after this one with another Good Vibe Tribe member. So uh, by all means, stick around. But all the money that we're raising um, today, this week on these streams is being donated on Saturday. Uh, Bearded Leo, the, the Good Vibe Tribe, were raising money for a young boy named Noah. He was born without ears. It's a medical condition. There's a, a name for it. I apologize. I don't remember it. But there's a lot of other internal organ issues and a lot of surgeries needed. 
Uh, and this young man's family is obviously financially overwhelmed because the insurance doesn't cover it all. So like today, we've, you guys have been incredibly generous. We've raised over 7,000 Lino. We've raised almost 10,000 Lino um, total. We're going to be donating on Saturday. So definitely tune in for that. But uh, if you guys haven't given Violent Hippie a follow, definitely drop by his channel. Uh, you can see he's the one donating all the Lino in chat right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, thank you all for being here again in about 10 minutes. We're going to have an, our next guest on Filthy Saint, Credible Soul. I can't wait to get to meet him. So stay tuned, guys. I love you all wherever you are on this planet. I'm sending you love and I wish you the best. And I can't wait to see you again soon. So aloha for now.